are some effective ways that coaches can communicate with their athletes on their team who have a different range of age and experience? And should these conversations be more one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting? Well, it's a great question. I think the, the preface behind all of this is it depends. And there is going to be a, a gray area as we answer a lot of these questions, because what works for one particular athlete might not necessarily work for another athlete. What works for one type of team or one type of sport might not necessarily work for another type of team or another type of sport. But I think in, in general, the, the first thing that coaches want to kind of recognize is what's the message that you're trying to get across? What's the intention that you're going for? Are you trying to just motivate um, an entire team or are you trying to motivate or have a conversation with an individual player? If you're trying to have a conversation with an individual player, it's probably most appropriate that that would be done in private. Um, but again, there may be opportunities to use the group setting if you want to make a positive example of an individual. And so if you wanted to make a positive example of an individual, that might be really nice to do in a group setting and say, wow, John or Kathy, they've been really crushing it lately. And I'm so proud of their growth and development. They're doing things right. That could very much be a nice um, method for, for uh, influencing your team mm -hmm. by bringing in that individual. And so then also, um... Does it differ if a coach is talking to a male versus a female athlete? I think it certainly can, but again, that also is going to depend. I mean, there are some um, male athletes that um, have some sensitivities and there's some female athletes that are gonna be open and, ha and to handling anything. So I think it's really a coach's job or a leader's job, any leader's job to read the room and to know the people on your team. And I don't know if coaches deliberately spend enough time doing that. And it doesn't require like hours and hours of sit down with an individual athlete and go through their entire family history and everything. But at the beginning of season or preseason, or a lot of these coaches are in the schools and they have an opportunity to maybe connect with some of their uh, team members is just to get a sense, like, who are these individuals? How do they like to be coached? What motivates them? Why do they play this particular game? Do they play other games, um, other sports? And so by getting to know those, those team members, it allows you to have better understanding of what might be an effective way to communicate with that person uh, when the time comes. And so that kind of led into the next question, which you kind of just answered, like how important is it for the coaches to know that emotional makeup of each player and then how far can a coach push or correct an individual without losing him or her mentally, not only for the practice, but especially like if you're in a game situation? That's the art of coaching. That is absolutely the art of coaching. But I, I think that there's some, some science and pragmatics behind it as well. By doing the legwork ahead of time and getting to know the people on your team, it's going to give you a head start to be able to recognize what is needed in a particular moment. Because if, if you somebody, if you see an athlete that's struggling during a practice, but you know, you've had conversations that like, they love being pushed, then you can say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get into this person a little bit more. Or if you remember a conversation with them and they said, well, I had a coach once that just constantly yelled at me and I didn't think it, I performed very well as a result. You might choose to do something a little bit more positive. Not that yelling is always negative, but you might choose to, to yell in a very positive way. Like, I know you can do this, make it happen. And so that could shift um, the, the, the manner of your communication in a way that actually aligns with the athlete and ensures that it's going to, um, reduce the likelihood that you set them over into panic zone instead of that learning or growth zone. And so we all know athletes consistently develop. So what is suggested language or verbiage coaches should be using when engaging or emerging with players? So I want to, I, 
I think coaches, all of us can do a better job of speaking in a positive way. Now, positive certainly can mean I'm good enough, smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. So we could do the puppy dogs and rainbows. Like you're doing such a good job. Um, I really appreciate the contribution that you're making to this team. Yeah, that's, that's positive in tone, but I also mean positive in direction. So sometimes a coach has a tendency when they communicate or offer feedback is to say what not to do. And certainly offering what not to do is helpful, but when the brain hears what's not to do, it's gonna be focused on what not to do. So the attentional direction goes to the behavior or the activity that you're actually trying to stop. Instead, a coach, when they're providing feedback would be very much better served in identifying not what they don't want the athlete to do, but actually speak to what you do want the athlete to do. Fill that gap, drive to that hole, pass mm -hmm. to that person. That puts the positive, what the, what the brain actually wants to accomplish in the intentional focus, which then increases the likelihood that the athlete's going to be able to get it done. Yeah, very interesting way of looking at that. <laughs> So then in most cases, you know, athletes can't change their physical makeup. Like, yes, they can lift weights. Yes, they can do a couple things to try to make themselves physically stronger. But what at what age is it appropriate for coaches to acknowledge these differences with their athletes? And what are some techniques to help them improve? So that's another really interesting <laughs> question, because you even look at the professional level, let's say in football, and what Bill Belichick has done with some of his players. And you would look at some of his players, granted they're all pros, but you, you would look at some of his players and say, well, these, yeah, they're pros, but they're not necessarily the types of pros that we would think about being pros. So they might be smaller, right? They might not be as fast or they might be small, but really fast. And so I, I think that example serves the point that we don't necessarily know the contribution that our athletes can make. And certainly the contribution may be beyond what their actual physical size is. So rather than saying or making some assumptions about what the size may or may not, uh, how that size may or may not impact or influence the athlete, instead have conversations of what do you think your role can be on this team? What do you, what strengths do you think you really have that you can leverage? Obviously you're not the biggest person. You're not the tallest right. person. You're not the fastest person, but what do you think your contribution can be based on what your knowledge of the game is? And then as coaches, you can, you can make those determinations as, as well. You know, even so, in golf, somebody might not have the biggest drive, right. but they can be a great putter. And so um, I think as a coach, it's this co-collaboration of what I think your potential is, what you think your contribution can be. And when you add those two together, one plus one equals three. Yeah, I think you hit my golf game right in stride there when you said that. I'm a great putter, but not a whole lot of other things <laughs> pan out sometimes. <laughs> oh, that makes you dangerous. You can always save a round with good putting. So before we kind of transition into the athletic side of this, um, is there anything else you'd like to communicate to coaches that, um, you know, maybe they should be looking at with um, developmentally, emotionally, or physically um, challenges that their athletes are, are at in the different stages? Well, I think one one piece is just do your homework, right? There's some opportunities for you throughout the course of the year to take some continuing education on effective communication of different developmental ages or um, communicating with today's athlete, right? The millennials. Um, and a little bit of continuing education can just give you some additional nuggets of information of how to best approach um, today's athlete and the different struggles that they might have. But I think another big piece is coach with heart instead of head. Um, the head is there. Many coaches are great with X's and O's and schemes and knowing the best positions to put their athletes in. Um, but at the heart, we're just finding so much more in leadership that today's human being wants more heart than head. And so just give that little extra heartbeat and care and concern and compassion for the athlete. Um, get to know them, build that rapport. And I think that's going to ultimately lead to better performance and better team atmosphere uh, in the long term.